to introduce the synthesis, our approach and aims for delivering impact is Chris Cornelison. Chris leads Cawthron's, Institu uh, Cawthron's Institute's areas of science capability, including commercial research labs, technologies for a blue economy, and data science. His expertise include marine bi uh, technology, physical biology, and coastal processes. Chris, welcome. Kira Koto. Um, I thought I'd just expand on my introduction a little bit um, for those that may not know me, and I'll tell a little bit of a story later that builds on what Anaru Luke shared with you about me yesterday. Um, first of all, um, it's an absolute privilege and pleasure to be amongst all of you. I think I may be one of the few in the room that was actually here at the very first workshop around the National Science Challenges, even back when it was called Life in a Changing Ocean. And I think um, that title would also probably apply to this National Science Challenge. Um, so I've had that privilege. Um, I did have white hair before the challenge, uh, just, so, just for the record. Um, but it's interesting, because at first, we were probably crawling um, rather than walking, and maybe even throwing some temper tantrums, and then we got to walking. Well, now it's time to run, okay? We don't have a lot of time. We have 16 months left, if that. In fact, I think it might be more like 15. So what I'm gonna try and convey in this brief presentation, these, I, should, I should mention that the structures of this session and the next one, in the spirit of Joe Harawira, um, who so eloquently and beautifully told his um, version of it, where we learn from the past, reflect on the past, to act in the now, and to guide and plan for the future. Now, he would say that much better, but that's more or less what these two sessions are about. Um, so just keeping that in mind. Yeah, and so as part of my intro, I'd like to talk a little bit about impact, because that's what really what synthesis is about, is maximizing that impact. You would have seen the last two days, three days, just how much impact this challenge is having. Um, and I guess one is, um, if we go to the first slide, sorry, I didn't practice. Um, you know, the overarching aim of the synthesis program or theme is to ensure the overall result of sustainable seas is greater than the sum of its parts, right? Now, you've already heard a lot about the synthesis work we're doing. Each day, there's been a bit of it, um, certainly in the blue economy with Jody Kunch's presentations and por portions of the panel, um, as well as yesterday with the Teao Maori Synthesis, um, which was a really special event um, in the afternoon. And even Carolyn's work that she described working in Hawke's Bay as EBM in action, that's fallen under our synthesis theme. But if we think about impact, first and foremost, um, and think about why we're here, it's interesting. So I, I always like to personalize things too, so I thought I'd show the picture that I drew and shared with Anaru yesterday. This is why, why Aria is, um, when we were closing our eyes and thinking about that special place that's dear to our hearts and that we connect with, with the Moana. And that's my drawing, which is absolute crap, <laughs> right? But it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all, because it lives inside me, it lives in my mind, you know? I see this all the time in my mind. And that's what's dear to me. And I might point out that I used to draw pictures of the ocean when I was in fourth grade, all through grade school. I didn't see the ocean until I was 18 in person, but I always dreamed of it, and I always could picture it and visualize it. It was my dream to finally work for the betterment of the ocean, okay? So I think that dream is probably shared amongst many of you in this room. If you look at the vision on our banner over here, this is all about the Moana. That is our why, and Te Ao Maori is the why, right? So that's why we are here. I think we have something very special in here, in this room. And if you wanna look at impact, Julie introduced impact from the challenge. She listed papers, numbers of students, workshops, all sorts of stuff, number of researchers. The biggest impact isn't the what we produce, but how we've done it, and who we've done it with, right? And the manner in which we've done it which is critical to the synthesis program and the way we do our work in the final year, right? So if I know by observing who's in this room and who's been in here over these three days and the conversations and presentations that we had, that impact is already happening. In fact, it happened in day one 
when we broke down the barriers among science institutes and all of a sudden we were working with scientists that we'd never worked with before. And in that very first workshop, it was just scientists and maybe a few EB representatives and maybe someone from MPI and MFE and a few people from MB, right? It's a totally different mixture now. And what we're talking about and what we've learned since then is absolutely tremendous. But the trick is with synthesis, and this is what all this, the strain leaders will be talking about and also when we talk about integration for impact, is getting our message out there. We know what's happening. That was very clear in Simon's talk, for instance, today. We know the solutions, the tools. We saw those today. We have plenty of those, right? But it's about the actual action, actually putting it out there and putting it into, putting it into play and reversing the degradation of the ocean. In my own backyard in Tasman Bay, scallops, that graph that um, Simon showed really hits home. I've been studying that system for 17 years at Cawthron, and it's still the same. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick and tired of monitoring the, the demise of our ocean. It's about time we start, started getting stuck into it and reversing it. So that's why um, Kura's talk resonated with me so much. It's that sense of regret. I think that's what I'm actually feeling is that, that pending regret if we don't get out there and do something. So what I'm, I don't have any team listed on here. You guys are the team. I'm the point, the person, point person for this theme, but I'm absolutely not the team. It's all of us, and in fact, the CLT, and the strain leaders that have come on board that you'll hear from, some of which you've already heard from, are doing a tremendous job in this space and it's collective leadership, which is something very, very powerful. But the who, so that's how we, how we work, who's leading it, but the who means that we, while we're doing our synthesis work, we absolutely have to be doing it with our co-development partners. We have to know our customer so that when we complete our work, it hits their desk or whatever it is, or boat, or whatever, and actually enables action, so actionable knowledge. That is not a peer-reviewed paper. That might just be an action. I knew I'd ramble. Um, so bringing it back home, just to keep me structured, I do have a couple, just two slides, three slides, before we let much more smarter people talk. Uh, so, so this sort of sums up the criteria we're, we're essentially agreeing to in, in the synthesis work. Um, absolutely needs to be valued by Maori partners and stakeholders. Focus, like I said, on actionable knowledge, tailored, okay, so that it's able to be taken up by multiple audiences, easily accessible. There's a, quite a valley between what we've done and those that need it. We need, to, we need to bridge that, okay? We absolutely need to roll it out beyond the end users directly involved, and that includes to the world. I'm on orange. Not forgetting legacy. Okay, we're racing to a finish line in 15 months. To me, that's the starting line to getting busy and creating legacy for this country and for our Moana. I'm not gonna read all those because I've run out of time. <laughs> but you get it. I think you all get in this room. I feel like I'm preaching the choir and you guys could all be presenting this. Um, and the last thing here is just to, to show the structure. We had some posters downstairs. Um, showing how the, the synthesis program um, we've structured in this final year. We have three or four strands, really. There's three that are clearly here that are interwoven and lead into integration for impact, which I'll be giving a short introduction on briefly, uh, um, reasonably soon. Um, Kane Tiapa is the leader of a Teo Maori strand. Uh, we heard some exceptional presentations and did some great things yesterday relating to that synthesis strand. Uh, we also have Jody Conch, who unfortunately had to head back today. Um, she leads our Blue Economy strand, which on the first day was, again, some great dialogue on that day. Great, yeah, it's just amazing stuff. Um, we're gonna shortly hear from Anne-Marie uh, Schwartz, who's leading our EBM strand. You'll hit, get more detail there. I'm not gonna talk any more to that. And Karen Fisher, who's importantly doing some work on our research process. So it's how, you know, our journey of, of doing research in a collaborative process like a National Science Challenge and making sure we take as many learnings from that as possible, which relate, relates to Te Parangi and our future pathways and how we properly enable mission-led research. So I'm gonna end there. Thanks.